Dutch Courtney, a very special guest joining us right now as we welcome uh, the Strathclyde Police Department, and that's Scotland, a retired Detective Chief Superintendent John Carnican. You don't earn a title like that without many, many years in service. Yeah, nearly 39 years in service, which you probably find difficult to believe because I don't look that old. Yeah. But yeah, 39 years service. There you have it. You're here in Edmonton. You're going to be speaking to the Reach Council for Safe Communities today about community safety. Yeah. Uh, for starters, to, to get a general context here, why don't you describe Strathclyde? Scotland to us, your stomping yeah. grounds, your home Well, turf. Strathclyde, um, the biggest city is Glasgow. Everyone will have heard of Glasgow and the reputation Glasgow had uh, for being violent and, and uh, that's the reputation, sadly, that we had. Seemed to be a bit of a brawler's city. Yes, yes. And the truth of the matter is, it's not. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't come from Glasgow and you're visiting Glasgow, your chances of being uh, the victim of a crime are, I think, 0.0001%. We don't have that. We, uh, it happens in the, the poorer areas of our city and it happens to individuals who live close to one another. And that's what makes it the same for any city in the world. The issues are the same in relation to violence. Our, uh, violence Reduction Unit is what we've been working on for the past eight or nine years and it's about using public health because violence is a public health issue. It's not a policing issue. I think um, if you talk to Edmontonians, they would probably echo this understanding that I think across Canada, people that don't live here might look at, say for example, Edmonton's homicide rate, especially yes. from a couple of years ago, yes. and judge an entire city based yes, on that. But you absolutely. talk to the average Edmontonian, they probably feel yes. relatively safe. Yeah, absolutely, and it's the same in, in, in every city. Every city I go to, and I do quite a bit of traveling, um, you'll find it's the same challenges. It's young people who are disenfranchised, they're alienated, there'll be issues with alcohol, alcohol, there'll be poor social outcomes, there'll be poor educational outcomes, um, young people who don't have much to do and violence becomes a way of life and that's what happens. And another issue I think that's, that's probably universal sadly is violence against women and domestic violence because if you don't fix violence against women and domestic violence you'll never fix violence. That needs to be the focal point. That's the place where the ripple will spread out quicker than anywhere else if you're doing work on mm -hmm. violence reduction. Based on your expertise, uh, sir, how, how does that work? We often hear when you talk to experts in the field of domestic violence, family mm -hmm. violence, violence against women, that it creates this, this sort of reciprocal effect in other words especially young men that will grow up in a household and witness mm -hmm. this oftentimes yeah, will yeah. go on to apply that same behavior to their own lives yeah, is yeah. that kind of a, a greater application toward how crime trends can work yeah well it's well it probably is yeah there's no doubt you're, you you conform to the to the uh, society that, that you live in, the society you're around, you conform to what your friends do. So if your friends drink, you drink. If your friends gamble and swear, you'll gamble and swear. If your friends, you're likely to do that. We all do that. We conform to the, the group that we're in. Um, but in relation to, to violence, I think it's important that, that the reason that domestic violence is so important, it's an insidious crime in any event, but um, if there are children there, the most important four years of a child's life are up to age three. That's when you learn the sort of non cognitive human skills that allow you to make good decisions about yourself, to communicate, to negotiate, to compromise, to problem solve. And so you don't have to be violent and aggressive. You can deal with problems in another way. You make good decisions about yourself. You judge risk. You don't take drugs. You don't run in gangs. You don't get pregnant when you're 13 or 14. You make good decisions about yourself. Finally, very quickly, Edmonton's police chief went to city council uh, several months ago asking for funding that ultimately he did not receive, or at least didn't receive the lion's share that he wanted. If if you had to pick and choose in today's reality where you would apply funding when it comes to community policing to pursue community safety, where would you put that money? Well, the first thing I would do before I spend any more funding on anything is check what we're already spending and get people working together to work together better and coordinate services that already exist because I think you'll find there'll be lots of slack in every service and not just uh, in policing. So more money is not really the answer to these things often, I think. John Carnikin will uh, address Reach Edmonton tonight uh, from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Central Lions Seniors Recreational Center. All of the information under the Inside BT link on our website. Thanks for sharing your expertise Thank you. with us. Thank Great you. insight. Thank BT you. back with news, traffic, and weather right after this 628 Wednesday morning. Thank you.